Hey, welcome to Transformation Church. You can see our logo up in the corner. You can contact us at transformation, and we're the dot com dot com. So join us as we begin to worship this morning. And Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for your presence in this place. Father, there's nothing more important to us than to worship and praise your holy name. We thank you. We, we're grateful for what you've done this week, and we're grateful for what is going to happen in this week coming here. And Lord, we're believing for great things. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Amy, we need to put you to work if you left the clicker up here. Oh, I got uh, See the, the little clicker? Thank you. Appreciate it. All right. We're ready. Ready or not, here we come. i 
First Peter 2.24, by Jesus Christ drives, we were healed. If we were healed, then we are healed. And I've tried to picture myself being at this place called healed. And I'm a visual person. So I see this place called healed, and that's where I am. And sickness is trying to get a hold of me. So when, when Pastor Eddie wrote this song, and, and, and it's totally scriptural, it's basically, when we see the, the exact wording, sickness and disease, you get away from me. Because it's trying to come to you. So don't receive it. You know, don't, you know, I'm not, I am not sick. I am the healed of the Lord. I'm resisting sickness. And as we submit to God, resist the devil, he has to flee from us. And we need to know that so that we can walk in it. And I felt like the Lord said as we sing that, that verse again, receive, receive, your, see yourself in a place of healing. This place called there, this place called healing. It's a place with sickness trying to steal it from you. Got that? You ready? And wave to those who are waiting. I am the healed of the Lord. I am the healed. Peace of the Lord. 
came out of a ooh, revival meeting. <clears throat> Pastor Becky was praying for people. And the Lord told me to go to the keyboard. <laughs> and I mean, I got, it was like I drank a super high octane <laughs> proof something or other. I was like instantly hammered in the spirit wobbling around and about to fall out from behind the keyboard. So <laughs> when I do this song, you know, like it's like it takes it takes me back to that moment. So it's almost it gets pretty hard sometimes to even function because you you relive the moment that the thing came. And this was one of the wildest services I've we've ever been in where the Spirit of God was just moving so heavily. And this thing just started bubbling out of me. And it started with just, I have the joy of the Lord, and then the ha, 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 he, 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 he. Because, you know, if you have joy, there's usually, usually going to be a sign that you have joy. Amen. I remember praying for somebody at one, one of the revivals we did in the 90s. The Lord told me to go back to the back and pray for them. They were sitting in the back of the building. And I said, can I pray for you to receive the joy? And they go, I have the joy. <laughs> I went, okay. <laughs> Sorry I bothered you. <laughs> but you know, don't just assume you have the joy. Receive it. I'm telling you, this song, you can receive it if you'll let what is being released come on you. And if I can stay focused enough to follow where I need to be. <laughs> I have the joy of the Lord. I have the joy of the Lord. Depression comes when I let the river flow. I have the joy of the Lord. Ha, 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 ha. says a merry heart doeth good like a medicine. Have you ever read that scripture? Mm -hmm. If you don't think it's there just Google it, look it up. A merry heart doeth good like a medicine. That means heaven's medicine is to have a merry heart. So there have been all kinds of people healed while the Spirit of God touched them and they were just laughing uncontrollably. One of the things that uh, sticks out to me that happened was a lady who had had an abortion in her early life had been carrying the guilt of that and the torment of that in her heart for 
couple decades, and while she was on the floor, laughing uncontrollably under the spirit, she had a vision of a little girl dancing around Jesus in a nice little dress, and she's just dancing around Jesus, and all of a sudden she stops and looks down, and the lady could tell she was looking right at her and said, look, Jesus, Mommy's laughing. And that healed her of aborting that child. So the Bible says God takes the foolish things to confound the wise. It's kind of foolish to think you can lay on the floor and laugh and be healed of something that's tormented you for decades. But if you just surrender to the Spirit of God, there's, there's things that he will heal that you don't even know to ask to be healed. One of the side effects that happened to me in 93 when we were attending the meetings where this was being poured out is I, I had run out of my medications for my high blood pressure, but I didn't want to miss the meetings. So after a week of meetings, I decided I probably better go to the doctor and you know get him to refill that. And when he checked me, my blood pressure was perfectly normal. He said, what are you? I said, well, I haven't had the medication in over a week. He said, what have you been doing? I said, I've been getting drunk. <laughs> <laughs> And you should have seen his face. I've been waiting for years to get him back because he's one of those with a dry sense of humor. The very first time I went with to him, I had a, a sinus infection and I had a really bad headache. And my wife had been going to him, so she drug me down there. He was one of these that believed in natural medicines and stuff, and he didn't always use a regular medications. But anyway, I'm sitting there and he says, well, looks like we're gonna have to open you up. <laughs> I'm thinking, I just have a headache. <laughs> he knew what he was doing because there's a big sign outside that says surgery and all this other stuff. So he said, looks like, first time I've ever met him, looks like we're going to have to open you up. What he meant was he had this stuff he would put on a Q-tip and he would put it up your nostril and sit you under a heat lamp and it would open up your head. But he knew what it sounded like. So I've been waiting for a long time to get him back. He, <laughs> he knew we were ministers. He he, he was a Christian. He attended the same church that we were going to at the time uh, earlier in life. But So when I said I've been getting drunk, you should have seen his face. And then I explained it to him. Oh, he said, oh, so I got healed of high blood pressure. Just didn't even ask for it. Never got in line to get prayed for it. Just let God touch me and the joy of the Lord came and did what we've just been singing about. I'm the, I was the healed of the Lord, and being in his presence just drove sickness away. It drove it away because the price has already been paid. Why would you live in poverty if your parents left you a million dollars and had it in the bank there? Why would you think you're a pauper? Wouldn't you go to receive what belongs to you? It's possible to live in poverty but actually be a millionaire. It's possible to be healed which you are by his stripes you were as soon as Jesus took that beating healing was your healing was purchased and as a believer you are healed so refuse to allow the devil to keep lying to you refuse to allow him to keep you in bondage tell him take a hike sickness and disease you get away from me because I've been delivered from you I've, the price has already been paid for me to be healed. Amen. 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 All right. It's not my week to preach, so I got to stop. <laughs> <laughs> I can hear that snicker of meaning. What difference does that make? <laughs> Lord bless you.
Yeah. <laughs> 
for you, he is 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 for me, 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 he is for me. sing praises to your name. Oh, Lord, praises to your name. Oh, Lord, for your name is great and greatly to be praised. I sing praises to your name.
Come glorify 
thank you for going before us and behind us, Lord. Lord, thank you for making a way where there seems to be no way. Thank you for providing fountains of water in the wilderness and the dryness of our life. Thank you, Lord, that you are the spring that springs up to overflowing. Thank you for the river of God that flows in us and through us. for your greatness that you impart to us. Lord, thank you for your character that indwells in us, that we can pull from. Thank you, Lord. Thank you that you've given us eyes to see and ears to hear and hearts to receive what you have for us. Thank you for revelation knowledge that's flowing in each of us right now. Reveal yourself to us in a manner that we don't don't know yet. Thank you for opening doors of opportunity that we haven't even seen yet, that are in the unseen realm that are about to, to break and burst forth in Jesus' name. Opportunities, doors of opportunities are opening. And if I were you, I'd be saying, I'll, I'll, I'll take one of those doors, I'll take a couple of them in Jesus' name insights, revelations, gifts, anointings. And Father, right now we just intercede for those that have faced devastation from the Hurricane Laura. Father, those that have faced devastation from the riots and the, um, the, the police officers that have been shot just because they're police officers. Father, for the devastation that's been going around and people have lost family members, Lord, from COVID-19, Lord, that, that are grieving right now, we just speak peace in the midst of the storm that they're going through. Father, for every perpetrator of, that wasn't a hurricane, that wasn't just a sickness, Father, but that was actually a man-made, Father, we choose to forgive the perpetrator, and we pray, Lord, your, your, that their eyes would be open, their ears would be open, that their hearts would receive you, and that they would amend their ways. Father, we thank you that your grace is sufficient. When we're weak, you're strong. to that financial storm. Peace to that broken heart. Peace to devastation. Someone said in their heart, I don't know if I can take any more, Lord. But he is saying to you, my grace is sufficient. When you're weak, I am strong. Don't run from him, run to him. In fact, if you're a born-again Christian, God is in you, he is with you, and he is for you. That's the scripture. So call upon the God that's within you. Draw your strength from him. we transition, um, we have these things that God has told us to plant what we call embassies of heaven, and the Holy Spirit prompted me to share this. An embassy of heaven, um, I'm not going to go into all the details, but we're meeting um, Tuesday nights in Longwood right now, depending on when you're watching this. 
Thursday night in Altamont Springs, Florida, and Saturday morning in Deland, Florida. And um, so, and we're going to be expanding because God said so. Um, but uh, I don't know, babe, if you want to share with somebody else, but what happened Saturday? Because I was not at the Embassy of Heaven, but I'm telling you, an Embassy of Heaven is where heaven meets earth. It's where, just like our American Embassy, when our American Embassy is over in Germany, the rules of America and that ground that the embassy is on belongs to the United States of America. It doesn't belong to Germany and vice versa. When German, German embassy here belongs to Germany, it doesn't belong to the United States of America. So as an embassy of heaven, the rules on earth are what we operate by. We operate about on the rules of heaven and it is heaven's territory. And these embassies of heaven are places you can come to get healed spiritually, physically, mentally, financially, whatever you need. And the presence of God, um, you know, is, is captivated at the, at, at the embassies of heaven, and you can receive what you need. So I just think you should share a testimony. And then I'm going to get out of the way. or Jerry, what happened Saturday? Channing? Jerry? I'm so embarrassed. <laughs> anyway, um... embassy the laws of the home country supersede it doesn't it doesn't do away with the laws right. of the country where the embassy is it's they, the laws of the home country supersede so what hap what god laid on my heart was that we were to establish these embassies because the bible calls us as believers you are an ambassador for christ we are ambassadors in fact when my wife and i were young teenagers back in the last millennia. <laughs> I, I used to get a kick out of saying, you know, I was born in the last century and my grandson, my 13-year-old, leave it to a 13-year-old, right? He said, uh, you were born in the last millennia. I went, whoa, that makes me feel younger. <laughs> but in the last millennia, when we were teenagers, the youth group that would meet in the denomination that we uh, attended as youth was called Christ ambassadors which is based on that scripture you are ambassadors we would sing this Christ ambassador song every week we are ambassadors. <laughs> but the, that is the truth we are if we're a believer we are an ambassador for Christ we we now represent the kingdom kingdom of God Jesus came preaching the kingdom the sound went out. did it go out did it Stuff, yeah. Can I take mine, babe? Well, I don't think it's the microphone. I think it's the. Well, we're on the test, 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 test. Yeah. 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 That's Raymond. And I have clothes for you. Oh, it's the whole thing. Oh, no, it's that mic. Anyway, I don't know what you heard, what you didn't hear, but anyway. If you are a believer, you are an ambassador for Christ, according to the word. So where you live, see, um, where we set up for ambassadors to live is called an embassy, right? So your house, when you become a Christian, becomes an embassy. That means that the laws of heaven are supposed to supersede the laws of earth on your property, in your home. That's what the Lord has directed us to begin to establish and set up and there's we have three right now I thought we were going for a hundred but the Lord has upped that to a thousand so if you're out there listening and the Lord is speaking to you anyway we actually saw the laws of heaven override some physical laws on Saturday at, at Channy's house in Deland a young girl that's how old is she 25 26 26 who has autism came and normally she's like really agitated and, but she, when she came onto the property she's and came been institutionalized. in she was what's that she's been institutionalized she's been institutionalized in the past in fact the day before she had such a an episode that her father called the police um, 
And I think it was because it was spirits that control yeah. that thing. Now, you may disagree with me. You may think it's all physical. But, you know, the greatest healing evangelist besides Jesus and the Apostle Paul that has walked the face of the earth, Smith Wigglesworth, treated every sickness like a demon. Mm -hmm. And he saw 20-some people raised from the dead. He saw all kinds. He literally saw tumors drop out of people onto the floor. So until your results are better than his, I think I'm going to listen to what he believes mm -hmm. instead of maybe what you believe. <laughs> you start having better results, then I'll, I'll take into consideration what you want to say. But anyway, I think those demons knew because we had arranged to pray for her at this meeting on Saturday. I think they knew you know, their time was getting limited, and they, they reacted. They wanted to get her somewhere where she couldn't come. You know, it was a possibility they would have taken her to an, another institution, right, or into the hospital or something to where she couldn't have come to that appointment. But what happened was when she came, she really didn't, she was very calm. She let us pray for her which I don't know if that's normal or not. Um, she let me hug her a couple times because the Lord said, just hug her first. Because the Lord wanted to display his love to her yeah. because love never fails. Right. <laughs> if, if you don't know what to do, just love people. Yeah. If you can't think of anything else, just just let the love of God that's in you flow out of you to other people. And that can break all kinds of things. Anyway, we believe we're going to see a total recovery. I believe the day will come when she's in her total right mind and completely functional on her own. Amen. Because we cast those things out of her. Amen. And we're going to continue to put a hedge of protection around her. In fact, Lord, right now, in Jesus' name, we apply the blood to Isabel again today as a hedge of protection, that these spirits will not be able to make their way back in. And I thank you for daily improvement. I thank you for complete recovery, 100% recovery in Jesus' name. And we thank you, Lord, that your name will be glorified through this, and it will affect many, many, many other lives, that her testimony is going to lead thousands and thousands to Jesus. And we thank you for it. In advance, in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. So if the Lord's speaking to you, if he's quickening your heart, get in contact with us. Uh, we don't, you know, we just know God said move this direction, so we're moving and we're allowing him to lead every part of it as we go. And if he's speaking to you, be a part of it. You contact us and we'll meet with you and we'll go from there. Amen. But I believe, in, in my heart, I believe God's already been speaking to people. You know you know if there's a greater destiny for your life than what you're experiencing right now. You already know it. There's already something in you. And when we begin to talk about this, you felt something in you leap. If that's you, you definitely need to get in contact with us because God is getting ready to reveal something, not only here in America, but worldwide. There is another awakening coming in the name of Jesus there's, his presence is going to descend like it did at the Hebrides revival, and the whole society is going to change, not because we got new laws, not because of who we elect, none of those things. We can have all of those that we want, and if we don't have his presence come, we've gained nothing because only his presence is going to change hearts. We don't need new laws to stop the riots. We need new hearts. Amen? Amen. And any time you have the ability or the opportunity to share the love of God, do it because love will change our nation. God is love, and his presence will come down and change the hearts of people. Amen. I, it's still not my week to preach, so. But we are going to receive the morning tithes and offerings. Are you going to switch that thing around, or are you going to leave it there? I'll stand on that. Okay. So we have our our declaration that we say because it's important that you speak life. Go to transformation.com. Go to transformation church. 
T R A N S, the number four, T I. There's a logo there, they can look at it. Wait, how you messed me up? Yeah, look at the logo, but you spell it T R A N S, the number four, M A T I O N C H U R C H dot com. And you can click on the giving tab, and under on that tab will the thing will scroll down and it'll say um, offering declaration. That's what we're going to read. I'm giving you time to get to it, pull it down, and read it with us. Because speaking life over your finances is important. Speaking life over your health is important. Speaking life over your marriage is important. Speaking, Start speaking. If you don't want to experience what you're saying, then don't say it. Only let come out of your mouth things that you actually want to experience. Like if it looks like people are going to get laid off at your job, what you need to, you don't need to be saying, oh, if there's layoffs, I'll be the first one to go. What you need to be saying is if there's layoffs, I'll be the last one to go. In fact, I'm not even going to go. I'm going to get promoted. You need to say that instead of agreeing with death because the Bible says the power of death and life are in the tongue. What you say is what you experience. So be careful. Little mouth, what you say. Amen. All right. If you haven't found it by now, you're probably not going to find it in time. So here we go. Tell them how to give. Oh, you can also give while you're there. <laughs> I'm getting directions from the peanut gallery. I should have had her do it. Um, there's also on the giving tab, it'll take you to, I think, PayPal. And you can give with debit card or PayPal or whatever you want to do. If you want to send cash, there's a address there, right? You want to send a check? Mail, mail. If you're still in the last millennia like I am on a lot of things, you know, it, <laughs> I've, I've just recently started remembering I'm carrying this thing in my pocket that I can take pictures of this and I don't have to try to remember it. I can actually take a picture and have it with me. <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm slowly coming into this millennia. But anyway, <laughs> give if the Lord's telling you to give. Here we go. Because I am a tither and a giver, the windows of heaven are open to me, and God rebukes the devourer for my sake. Let's pause for a minute. Satan, you are rebuked off of our finances. Say that with me. Satan, you are rebuked off of my finances. In Jesus' name. Okay, where were we? I am blessed financially and receive a blessing that I cannot contain. I do not worry about lack, knowing God supplies all my needs richly and abundantly. Therefore, I am able to sow freely and liberally. And I choose to sow cheerfully, generously, and bountifully, knowing I will reap bountifully. I have in abundance every favor and heavenly and earthly blessing. All my needs are met, and I abound in every good work. Because I obey him, the Lord blesses everything I put my hand to. Stop for a minute. Put your hand to your head. He blesses everything you put your hand to. All right. He grants me abundant prosperity. He makes me the head and not the tail, above and not beneath. The blessings of God are chasing me and overtaking me. Hold it. If you can find your funny bone, put your hand there because some of you need your sense of humor to be increased in Jesus name all right because God loves to see me prosper I am believing him for jobs and better jobs advancements raises and bonuses sales and commissions God ideas and strategies debts paid off amen expenses decreased amen blessings and increases financial freedom yes and breakthroughs and houses and lands you know, freedom is a God idea, and God wants you free financially, too. Amen. God does not want you to have to consider your finances if he speaks to you to do something. God wants you free so that he can say, I need you over here on this date, and you don't have to say, you don't have, even have to make a plan. You've already got, you already possess enough to require no help, no aid or support, as it says in 2 Corinthians. And you're furnished in abundance for every good work. I think we've limited that to think furnished in abundance for every good work. 
and charitable donation. We thought that meant just to give out. No, there's a good works he wants you to do, and he wants you to be furnished in abundance to be able to do it. Amen. 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 Not just to give out, but for him, you to be able to do what he wants you to do, along with giving out to every good work and charitable donation. Amen. Amen. All right, it's still not my week to preach, so. Oh, let's pray. <laughs> I'm half lit. Yeah, I'm, you are. I might be three quarters lit. I might be all the way lit. I'm just lit. <laughs> I'm normally very quiet. Really, I am. Naturally. But when I get drunk, I'm not natural. Mm. So, Father, we thank you for the privilege of giving into your kingdom. And I pray specifically for the person watching that is having a major financial struggle. And I say, be blessed in the name of Jesus. We loose the resources of heaven to flow into your hands in Jesus' name. We break the spirit of poverty off of your mind, off of your life, off of your spirit in Jesus' name. Father, I pray that you remove every thought that is a poverty mentality from their mind in the name of Jesus, open their eyes to see what is causing the issue and give them the anointing to stand in the victory you purchased for them. Lord Jesus, thank you for, for becoming poor so that we might become rich. Deliver us from the wrong concept of what it means to be rich. In Jesus' name, we thank you for it. We thank you for it. Amen. I mean, that's I'm moving. Yeah. Oh, I'm so shocked. Actually, I'm still in there. Hello. Do you want it down or just turn? Um, yeah, do that. Make it easy, easy. Okay, who waved at us? Let's see who was waving. Hey, Ron and Pastor David. Nice to see you and whoever else is watching. Um. I'm going to talk about Zoe, and it's it's, it's spelled Z-O-E, but it's actually pronounced Zoe um, in the Greek. I'm not a Greek scholar. I'm just, that's what I was told. Um, anyway, and it's a God kind of life. So, Father, right now I pray in the name of Jesus that you open our eyes to see, our ears to hear, our hearts to receive what you have for us. Lord, I thank you for your presence, your awesome presence that's here in this place today. I thank you, Lord, that we are the healed of the Lord that we are the blessed of the Lord, that you are in us, you are with us, and you are for us, and we thank you for that. And I pray, Lord, that that would become a revelation to everyone listening, Lord, how much you are in us, with us, and for us, in Jesus' name. And Lord, that we would learn to walk in the Zoe, God kind of life, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right, hi. So, I, I need help today. I Who would like to help me read the scriptures, because I'm... Get that microphone ready, if you don't mind, Gary. Would anyone like to help read? Sure. All right, Amy, um, I want you, we'll give Amy the microphone first. Romans 8, 14, verse 14 and 16. Who would like to read Proverbs 20, 27? Romans 8. All right, Gary will take Proverbs 20, 27. Yep, yeah, Romans 8, 14 and 16. And then the, what's my next scripture? And then, um. New King James will be fine. I, I wasn't picky with all of that, and I didn't research it. John 1, 4. Does anyone want to take John for one, chapter 1, verse 4? Okay, my husband's taking that one. And then I need John 5, 26. All right, we'll just have to go back around. Okay. All right. Ready, read. Romans 8, 14, and then verse 16. For as, many, for as many as are led by the Spirit of God, these are sons of God. For you did not receive the spirit of bondage again to fear, but you received the spirit of adoption by whom we cry out, Abba, Father. Is that both 14 and 16? 14 and 15. Uh, 16. The Spirit himself bears witness with our spirit that we are children of God. Okay, I want to stop right there. The Spirit of God bears witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. So 
it also says in the Word of God, and I don't know if it's going to be the next one, but the the, um, the Spirit of God is the candle in the man. So it basically says, well, I have it written down here. The Spirit of the man, where did I put it, is the candle of the Lord. So I'm going to go right real quickly through this. We are a three-part being, and most of the world says um, your body, soul, and spirit, but the Bible says we're spirit, soul, and body. So we are one-third Holy Ghost filled spirit, spirit man. Well, we're one-third spirit man. Hopefully Holy Ghost filled spirit man. In our case, we are. So one-third of us has got dead raising supernatural power in us. One-third, all right, spirit, soul. Your, your soul is your thinker, your feeler, your doer. That's what your soul is. And then body, obviously. Your body hurts. You know what your body is, all right? We got that. So we're talking about the spirit man. Go ahead and um, Proverbs twenty twenty seven. The spirit of... Oh, be healed, refrigerator. The spirit of the man is the lamp of the Lord, searching all the inner depths of his heart. So the spirit of man is the candle or the lamp. That's you know, it's 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 the part of us that we need to key into and, and where the Zoe life comes from. Um, who who is next? We didn't plan this very well. Yeah, we didn't sit in the right thing. Well, let me go. So if the spirit of man that's been born again then the spirit man is where the Holy Spirit is going to direct us and talk to us because we need to be trained in being spirit-led, which I'm not going to go into today, to, to, to today, but there's been a lack of teaching. I was born and raised in church, literally was probably in church by the time I was two weeks, if not sooner, cut my teeth on the pew. We were there every time the door was open, and I never heard teaching on being spirit-led. I didn't. I never heard that. And it's so important because that is how Jesus, that's how the spirit speaks to us, but we'll go into that. John 1, 4. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. And the light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not comprehend it. Okay, so in him is life. In who? Jesus. In Jesus. So in Jesus, that's where you, you derive your life from. It also says the spirit of man that's been born again. So we have to train our spirits to listen because that's the part of us that's been born again. And it's the, it's the spirit man that receives eternal life. That's where we get our eternal life from. John 5, 26. Yeah, I'll just let's go in that direction. John 5, 26. Come on. Come on. <clears throat> For as the Father has life in himself, so he has granted the Son to have life in himself. Okay. So the Father has life in himself. And that's this, all of these words when it says life, because that's not true of all the scriptures, but the ones I'm reading are the Zoe. zoe. It looks like Zoe, but the Zoe kind of life, the God kind of life. So it said that. The Father has Zoe in himself. And then it says, so he gives the Zoe life to Jesus. And then John 10.10, 10, I can quote that one. For Satan comes to steal, kill, and destroy. But I have come to give you life and life more abundantly. That's Zoe. So God gave Jesus Zoe, the God kind of life. He then gives it, Jesus gives it to us. I've come. So so did Jesus come just to set us straight and, hey, teach some kind of new doctrine? Did he come to, you know, help mankind get a code of ethics that we're lacking? I mean, a lot of times if, if you go and you think about it, that's kind of what is almost inferred even in, in churches and stuff, that, that, that he didn't come to give us life and life more abundantly. But that is the only reason Jesus came was to give us life and life more abundantly. And Zoe is eternal life. It's the life of God, the very life of God that, that he gives to us, and he wants to have us to have it more abundantly. So I want to keep it in touch. I want somebody to look up. I'm going to go again to John 1, 4, and just hold on to it till I'm ready. All right. So Jesus came. He came to, he didn't come to start a new religion. I mean, if you talk to some people, you'd have to wonder if that's what they think. Or to improve our, you know, humanity in some way, shape, or form. He, he had one purpose and one purpose alone. And Jesus came that we might, you and I, might have life and life more abundantly. That was the purpose Jesus came. 
And so I want that life and life more abundantly. But just like anything else, if, so, if you have a million dollars in the bank, but you don't know you have it, it does you no good. And so there are people that recognize they have the life of God within them and they're walking in it. And maybe as I, I share today, you'll recognize, oh, that person recognizes. It. But there are people that will go through their entire Christian walk, their entire Christian life, and not walk in the life abundantly. They, because they don't know they have it, they don't even know what it is. Are they going to heaven? Yes. When I say eternal life, I'm talking about a life force that, that's dwelling within us, that's God's, the very life of God in us. Um, I don't even think my mind can totally comprehend what that is, but I believe that God's not a man that he should lie, and he said, I have his life, that I have the Zoe, the God kind of life. Anyway, so he came, Jesus came, because that the eternal life he came to give us is in, in the very nature of God. And if you know you have the very nature of God within you, don't you, I think it makes us more aware of we can do what he said we could do. We can be who he said we can be. The greater one lives inside of us. But do we know that the greater one, he said, um, they'll know you're Christians by your love. Well, I don't always walk in love, especially during this time of the year when they're coming to vote and we're, we're having all these political whatever. Um, I have to, but... But I have to know that that's in me, and I can walk in that life, that, that that Zoe, God kind of life, his nature. I have his nature in me. The devil doesn't want us to know that. Just like anything else, if he can't stop you from getting saved, then he stops, tries to stop us from living the fullness of what God has for us. How many would agree? He, does, he can't walk in what you don't know. If you don't know that, you know, that... God's provided a new vehicle for you and the keys are sitting in there and all you have to do is get in. If you don't know it, it might as well, you might as well not have it. It's, not, it's no good to you if you don't know what it is that you have. So the eternal life that Jesus came to give us is the very nature of God. I want to, oh, John 5, 26, and it said, as the Father, we already read this, but as the Father has life in himself, so it was. He, he was given to the Son. He has that, so son has life in him, and I have come that you might have life and life more abundantly. So that same, I want to make sure we get that. The life of God, he gave it to Jesus. Jesus gave it to us, it's ours. That you might have the life of God in you. Jesus came that you might have the life of God in you. Jesus came that you might have the life of God in you. Jesus came, why? One purpose, that we might have the life of God in us and more abundantly that it increases over our, over time. I believe it just can increase and increase. I know I'm constantly learning. I could have read the same scripture over for my entire lifetime and all of a sudden read it and go, oh, wow, uh, why didn't I see that before? So that you might have the life of God in you, that we might have the nature of God within you. And that was more exciting to me when I started studying this, that I might have the nature of God in me, that it, it can increase in me, that I might, that's why Jesus came, that I could have the nature of God. If we're left to our own demise and we just follow our own quote-unquote sinful instincts because Adam and Eve sinned, we see what that produces everywhere around us. Turn on the television if you're, you're just wondering what that might be. <laughs> that is absolutely, it's ridiculous. What, um, you know, I, I know for, from one of the things I saw, um, this person did not want to be t referred to as a female. She said, I'm referred to as um, a mermaid queen king. That's who I am. I'm a mermaid king queen. And oh call yeah. Me and, and call me they. Well, if you're left here on the mice, and you know how hollow that person probably is. You know how miserable that person is. Because I we used to teach young adults back in the day. Um, be, even before we did um, youth group, we actually did young adults with 18 to 30, not married. And. <laughs> And many of them would already have, you know, messed up their lives, of course, got into messes, um, had abortions, um, all kinds of stuff. And we, I kept thinking, wow, I wish we could get them earlier. We could maybe help not, you know, help avoid some of this stuff. But um, why was I going there? I started thinking about all the things people were telling me. Oh, I know why. Because we would say to them, and one girl came over to our house and she sat on our couch and she cried. She was beautiful, really gorgeous young lady. She could have been a model. She was tall, slender, just very pretty. And at 14, she had had an abortion. And, and then she ended up going to a church and some fellowship group leader 
got her in the sack and she got a STD that she had to live with for the rest of her life because there's no cure. And, you know, and I was thinking if she knew the Zoe life. So we would tell them, you see this Bible? Let me get my Bible. I won't pull it out of my thing, but it out of my beautiful case. Like my, my bling case. Anyway, the Bible is the um, handbook for your and my life, right? So, like, we've got a car. Somebody gave us a vehicle. Well, there's a handbook to the car. And when we have questions on what, like, what does that mean, which we should have seen on that tire one, <laughs> What's that, what does that mean on the screen? Um, we can look up the handbook and find out what it is because the creator of that vehicle tried to put as much detail in and how to operate that car. I know one vehicle we had, my husband had this thing about putting um, premium gas in it. Come to find out, I was reading through it years later, we kept, we still have that vehicle. You aren't supposed to put premium, premium in it. it, it caused problems, which we were having problems and I was trying to research why we were having that problem. Well, you weren't supposed to put premium. It seemed to him that was the better thing to do, right? Well, it can seem to you and I, this is a better way to do it. I don't care what God said. I mean, come on, this has got to be the better way. But the truth is, when he said, you shouldn't commit adultery or not to have sex outside of marriage, it, I, we would tell them, and I'm telling you right now, it's not to stop you from having fun, it's to protect you. Because you get STDs, you get pregnant, there's abortions involved, there's heartache, you, you fully give, giving yourself to someone, you're fully flooded with love for them and they despise you and they walk away. It's not, and again, don't be, this is not condemnation. If you're feeling condemned, that's not my point at all. My point is, from this day forward, you know, because like Jesus said, neither do I condemn thee, go and sin no more. But that, it's not to stop you from having fun. And it resonates with any one of us. Every, none of us have, have, have lived a perfect life except Jesus. So any time we've gotten into a mess, you might recognize, uh, I should have I should have done what God said. And Satan will just dangle things in front of us. Oh, you know, that little lie won't hurt. Or that, you know, whatever. Um, maybe they gave you too much change back at the store. Um, eh, you know. But those little things do add up. And I think if we were more aware that the actual nature of the life of God is within us, it wouldn't even be hard. We'd be going, oh. Because, you know, as you... You, you know, do unto others as you'd have them do unto you. You go to give that back or you don't lie. Um, I know sometimes when I ask, does this make me look fat? And he doesn't want to answer. Um, probably just walk away. Well, it's, you know what he says? It's not, it's not the best. <laughs> I didn't ask him today, but I didn't care. Uh, and then you get to a point, well, who cares? My son used to say when he was a kid, he's always over. He was 10 pounds, 8 ounces at birth. That's a miracle story in itself because they said my birth canal is so small I could never give birth to a child um, more than seven pounds and that, you know, be prepared for a, a C-section. So my first baby was almost eight and a half and Eric was ten and a half and, um, and I had no problems giving birth. Three pushes, <laughs> he was out. So <laughs> tells you, you know, a lot of people praying, hey, God's able, he knows, he, he knew what I needed. Um, Sorry, I don't, I don't know why I went there. But it, <laughs> oh, looking fat. Oh, so my son says, I even make fat look good. He would say that. Back to me, we had a pool party here um, yesterday for my grandson who turned nine. And um, our son was out there, and he's, he, he goes back and forth with his weight. And he, he said something about, there's some about loving all of this, you know. <laughs> he didn't care. I forgot he was making a, a, you know, about his weight. But um, wow, I'm going out there somewhere. <laughs> you have the life of God living within you. I don't even remember. Oh, the point. I do remember. <laughs> I just keep those things just bring back memories, and I'm laughing. This is your handbook, and it's not to keep you from having fun. And you do need to learn to laugh at yourself, by the way. We need to lighten up. We really do, and get over ourselves. And when I believe with all my heart, if we will recognize that Jesus came to give us the nature of God, the life of God, and that more abundantly, then we can walk in it. 
and we can have, and how much peace, I know for me, how much more peace would I walk in if I recognize I have the very nature of God? Man, when I heard this, I know I'm, have, I'm probably stumbling over it some because I'm still absorbing it. It's just, you know, something I read over before, 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 and it's like, it was one of those like, wait, whoa, whoa, I just hadn't seen it before. Not only that, and, and I realized that I'm going to continue to see it a little bit more. And thank you for bearing with me and all my goofs. But, um, but it's the Zoe kind of life. And it's God's intention that you and I walk in the Zoe kind of life and have that nature of God. And, and because that's what's going to make us happy. That's what's going to make us fulfilled. That's what's going to help us fulfill our destiny um, and not get into messes that we really would have preferred not to get into. Amen? Amen. I can remember. The Lord's just, I guess, part of these. He's bringing all this stuff to me. I can remember when I was, I believe, 12 years old or 13, and um, somebody wanted me to do something that I didn't want to do and I wasn't sure that I should do. And um, I remember going to my mom, just praying to God that she would say, no, you can't go. And she did. And remembering how thankful I was that I could blame it on my mom. And I just, since the Holy Spirit brought that to me, I want to encourage moms and dads, um, you know, even grandma, grandpa, maybe you're raising your children, um, they're your grandbabies, um, to say no, and you're going to be doing them a favor. You're, being permissive is just opening a door for all kinds of heartache for them and um, all kinds of issues. I remember going through a sleepover um, when I was 12. A lot happened when I was 12. And it, we, we were just a few girls, like five or six, and we did some dumb stuff, like um, call people up randomly or call different people. Um, so I can't even remember the joke anymore. Um, is your refrigerator, is your refrigerator, refrigerator running? Yeah. Well, hurry up and go catch it. You know, something stupid. Oh, ho, ho. And um, yeah, that kind of... Over it can. <laughs> anyway, uh, you're all thinking of all the dumb things. Well, so that was fine. But the problem was the older sister of the girl that I was friends with um, brought out a bottle of alcohol. I don't remember, vodka or something. And she wanted, she offered to share it with us. And... I didn't, I, don't, I didn't even go home. I just didn't. I'm thankful. I have no idea why. I did not. I just knew I didn't want to do that. And I think part of that, I will say this. My mom had told me early on, and maybe God knew, maybe I was one of those people, one drink and I would have been an alcoholic. But she reminded me, or she told me, I didn't know, that my grandma, my mom's mom, um, had been, she'd had polio and some other sicknesses, and she ended up getting addicted to drugs through the doctors. And she said, you know, I think that you need to be aware, made aware that you may have an addictive personality that you really don't want to touch. She was probably just being wise, but you don't want to touch drugs or alcohol because you might, because my, my mom totally, she said I had to, um, at eight years old, she can remember having to pull up a stool and her, her brother who was two years younger than her, they would both stand on stools to make dinner because her mom was, you know, zoned out somewhere. And her, grand, her dad having to, brush her hair, do all the grocery stop shopping. So she was raised in all of that. And um, and so that always stuck with me. And that was a deterrent. But how much more, I mean, you don't, if you, you, there's no high like the most high. And I know this for a fact because when we were in Jacksonville, Florida, no, Yulee, Yule, Florida. Yulee, huh, that name, Yulee, Florida, northern side of, north of, of Jacksonville. We, so South of Georgia, north of Jacksonville, Florida. And there were, what, how many of them? Three. Three of the former drug dealers that had gotten saved. They had, I, evidently one of them at least, and you can help me with the details, had been at a Rodney Howard Brown um, meeting in Jacksonville, Florida. And he was living with his girlfriend at the time. He was the number two drug dealer in the area. He went forward for salvation and he came home, he shared this with us, he came home to his living girlfriend and said, we can't sleep together anymore. We can't live to get together anymore. I have Jesus, and I, I don't know one. He said nobody even taught me that. He just knew I, I can't do this. So they ended up getting married, by the way, and that's a whole other story. And um, in fact, his wife, when we did a second meeting, which was in Georgia, they heard that we were there, came up there because she had gotten uterine cancer, and she was scheduled to go to the doctor that next day. They were going to talk about taking her uterus out and what they were going to do, proceed, and. Um, I just, I, a gift of faith came on me. I'm just telling you, this is a gift of faith. Wish I could walk in it all the time. I can't say that I do, but a gift of faith. I laid hands on her gut, 
I felt like my hand went in her innards and did something like she got operated on right there. I knew she was healed. And he, he I was making my husband nervous because I knew she was healed and we were going around, the, we didn't do morning services at that particular place. We were meeting at a Methodist church and they opened it up to evening only. And um, anyway, so we're out and about town and I was inviting people to come. I said, there's this lady that's gonna come and give her testimony about being healed from uterine cancer. If you need to come and get healed, if you need to hear her testimony, and he, he would say to me, you don't know that. I said, I do. I know it. I know it. I know it. I know it. And again, it was a gift of faith. So sure enough, she came. She had been to the doctor, and there was no trace at all, and her uterus was healed. Amen. And, um, and she did have a baby after that. So they had quite the testimony. But why I say he's, he's the most high is these three drug dealers that was the, num was the number two and then was it the number one as well? Just two of his buddies. All right, the number two one and two of his buddies that used to help him. They were like, what did they say, man, I'm, I'm tripping or? I'm hallucinating. I'm hallucinating and my You're husband. You want to come tell this? He's better at all the details. Thank you. We were at this particular church Sunday through Wednesday, Tuesday night, and they were there every service. We were doing morning and night, and they were right there on the front row. Yulee. In Yulee. And uh, Tuesday night, they came up to me after and said, man, I'm hallucinating during the service. And I said, you what? Because hallucinations has to do with your high on drugs, right? I said, well, just, and, and you know, when people first get saved, they don't have the lingo down it. They just know how to relate to what their life was and to try to tell you what's going on now. And they said, we were hallucinating. And I said, well, tell me what was happening. And they described it. I said, oh, you were having a vision. The Spirit of God was coming on and you were having, they said, no, man, we know what it's like to hallucinate. We were hallucinating. <laughs> so we used to sit around and smoke pot and read the Bible. Yeah, can you believe that? <laughs> so I know it's the most high. They told me I don't have to experience that. Yeah, um, that, that they did say. This is better than the best high we've ever had. Yeah, they said this is better than the best high. Do you have John 1, 4? I do. Oh, you have it. Okay, yeah, I, it. Yeah. I knew I told somebody. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. So in who? Jesus. And Jesus was light, and the light um, and the light was the light of men. Mm -hmm. And light there means development. So the life was the development of men. So in him is that life, and that light will develop us into the nature of God, into the life of God, life everlasting that he has for each of us. Um, so it's a, it's a kind of life that God, there are four different words that, that um, say uh, life in the New Testament. And one means natural human life, one means um, your manner of life, which is, it seems like most churches kind of go in that vein, uh, uh, your manner of life. And one was like a confused behavior that was only used a few times. But this life, the Zoe life, is that nature of God, eternal life that he has for us. All right, I do need you to get the mic. Um, 2 Corinthians 5, 17 through 18. 2 Corinthians 5, 17 through 18. And I'm somebody next to get First John three fifteen. I'm actually getting close to done. I'm going to be short today. It is a miracle. Um, three fifteen. And Gary, Second Corinthians five seventeen and eighteen. Second Corinthians five seven. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. Old things have passed away. Behold. All things have become new. And all things are of God who has reconciled us to himself through Jesus Christ and has given to us the ministry of reconciliation. Okay. It says there that we are a new creation. Is that, was your say creature or creation? Seventeen. New creation. Creation. It actually means a new species. If you really go and dig down with the Greek and whatever, you're a new species. So when you get born again, you literally are, when it says be born again, 
God has created, you are born again with the God nature. You are a new species. <laughs> We're passing the mic over here. So you're the, so if a man is receiving a, for, a foreign nature that recreates his, or it is, I wrote this down because it's easier. It is man receiving a foreign nature that recreates his spirit and makes him a new species among men. That's what happens to us when we get born again. But how many of you know, have you ever, you can tell the difference when somebody's like on fire for God and, and it, like they're going, and two people that can be saved, but you're not always aware of the one of them's actually saved. Or how many of you have ever known somebody who's just a really good person? Just like in the Hebrides revival, um, it said when I did some study on that, that because it changed the whole culture, it, it literally changed the entire culture there, there were people that would read their Bible with their family, like fathers would say, okay, we're gonna read the Bible today, and he wasn't saved. But he did. But they believed that the principles had been set up so that the culture, so you would think he was, so somebody can read the Bible, they can go to church, but not be saved. And that's why we need to receive, because being saved is receiving that Zoe life, the nature of God, the light that comes with that to develop us, into the nature of God that we're and, and that everlasting life that He has for us, right? Mm -hmm. Am I going too fast, or we're doing okay? Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, we're okay. So um, we, that was Second Corinthians five seventeen and eight. So in Christ, we're a new species, miraculous recreation of man. God giving birth to a new man. That's us. He gives birth to a new man. That's why it's called being born again. First um, John three fifteen. Whoever hates his brother is a murderer, and you know that no murderer has eternal life abiding in him. Okay, so how does that work? If all things become new, and you see somebody, you know, is a murderer, and it says, nope, they don't have eternal life in them. They don't have the Zoe life of God in them. Now, can a murderer receive the Zoe life? Absolutely. Um, we've, we've, I know Kenneth Copeland has shared testimonies. I think it was him. I think so. Anyway, but he was talking about somebody. Wasn't he with somebody? He was at his execution. At his execution. Who had, he had murdered a bunch of women. He was a serial killer. He killed Captain Crunch. <laughs> I'm sorry. I've been around you too long. But literally, he had received Jesus. He got spirit filled. Kenneth Copeland even got to go in there with him to baptize him in water and everything. But he said, I want you to give me one thumb up if the grace of God is with you. And, and um, he basically, they let him testify before he was murdered or executed, executed excuse me, same thing. Um, anyway, and he put two thumbs up as the, you know, the pulsating went through and took his life, but he went to heaven. Um, but the bottom line is, no matter what sin you or I have committed, we become a new species. And there are people, men and women, who have gotten out of prison, who have, you would never know. We were in... Um, Kissimmee, I think, or St. Cloud, doing meetings in um, Florida. And this woman walked up to me, and I don't remember what I had preached on, but it reminded her. She said, I just wanted to tell you, I used to be a madam, high, she, with, she, with the senators and whatnot, high up, that she used to, you know, take. She was a call lady, helping people have get their prostitutes and whatever. She was a madam. And she said, and I, you know, and I had seen her before, I had talked to her, <coughs> And she had no smell of smoke on her, if you know what I mean. It, I mean, you would never in a million years guess that this lady ever had that in her background. And she said, I wanted to tell you what the, what, you know, the life of God, how much it can change somebody. I, and it was just so exciting to me because you would never know. And so I don't know what you've gone through, whether you're online here, what we've gone through here, but we don't need to be ashamed of anything. The past is the past and the future is bright especially if we decide to let the Zoe, the life of God, come and infiltrate us and change our very nature into the nature of God. And we're a work in progress. So if some of you are going, well, yeah, all right, I've seen some of you Christians. Um, some, some people haven't allowed the, the nature of God to come in them. Some people are a work in progress. Most of us are a work in progress. But you need to allow Jesus to come in. And um, before I get ahead of myself, so all things become new in our spirit, man. We are to let the inward man dominate us. Let the light of life of God dominate us. So when you're trying to figure out, do I take this job, do I not take this job? Do I get married, do I not get married? Do I go here, do I not go there? You have the very nature, spirit of life, 
God, of God in you. That Holy Spirit is speaking to you. And it says in, in John chapter 16, verse 13, I think it is, that he is to tell you of things to come. So the Holy Spirit, because you have allowed the life of God and that life abundantly to come in you, that God nature, God's life that gave to Jesus, that he gave to us, that he came because he wanted us to have it, then we, we have to be led and let our spirit man dominate us instead of our head, instead of our feelings, instead of our thinker, feel, or doer. We need to let that Holy Ghost within us dominate us because that's the nature of God and that'll keep us out of trouble. That'll lead us onto the right path every time. It'll keep us in, in the right space where we need to be. It'll keep our mind. Um, that's why it says he will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on him. You need to withdraw. It's like rivers of living water will flow from your belly. So your inner man, you need to get quiet. I'm telling somebody, this is a key. I've done it. You, just, you need to sit still, as still as you can. You know, you said your prayers or whatever, but sometimes when I'm praying, I can't get my mind to rest. I can't get it to shut up. And I have, I have to anyway, literally not rock in a rocking chair, not make my feet move, sit, make myself sit still, which is not easy, by the way, for me. Sit still. And I'm like, all right, God, speak to me. And I just sit there until I hear something. And I write it down. And almost... Without fail, 99.9% .9 of the time, I'm trying to think, why, I don't think that it's ever not happened, but just in case it didn't, 99.9%, .9 I hear. Well, I'm getting sig hand signals here. <laughs> I'm sorry. I wanted to share a testimony of what she's talking about that happened yesterday. Um, when she was there, I guess it was a week ago Saturday, we had prayed for a woman named Sandy right. uh, who was trying to sell a house. And we were praying that the house would sell. Right. And you had a word of knowledge that there was a woman that had wanted to buy the house, but then her financing didn't go through, so she didn't make an offer. So we prayed that her financing, that God would work it out and that she would be able to do it. Sandy told us yesterday that she has a contract on the house and there was a woman who her finances were not in the liner, so she couldn't, I know, I got it too. Her finances, uh, and that's a witness for those watching, yes. but um, her finances weren't in? working out. And so, so, so anyway, so that was an example of God speaking and God will give supernatural knowledge if we'll listen and pray and sometimes it's for you and sometimes it's for somebody else but I just wanted to awesome. say that God's yeah, I didn't know. It's new to me. it is and that is that same thing that Zoe and she had life of God I missed that part and fell through. oh exactly and like he, he was saying that she tried to do it before and her financing fell through what he just said so oh. yes <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Answer to prayer. We're seeing, by the way, if you you need to come to our embassies of heaven, maybe God's speaking to you to, to open up one, um, and we'll meet with you. But I'm telling you, we're seeing answers to prayer right on a, it's getting really awesome, the kind of things we're, and I didn't even know about that, because I wasn't there yesterday. So, that's the, the same spirit, though. Holy Ghost knows everything, and he will use you and I as we let the light of God come into us and grow us into what God wants us to be in that nature of God. Because God's will, it says, I, Beloved, you know, Beloved Chani, I wish above all things that you would prosper and be in health even as your soul prospers. Put your name in there, Beloved, whatever. I wish above all things that you would prosper and be in health even as your soul prospers. So God will use you. Um, and you have to, I have to tell you, I have to step out in faith and feel, I felt sensed I heard God. And I'm like, number one, why would I think that? You think about some of the things that God will tell you to say. Where would that come from? You know, and you're in prayer and you, you're not sensing that, you know, so we, I just step out in faith and do it. But that is the same thing, that Holy Ghost, that life within us. And we can start walking like that every day of our life while we're here on earth. And he wants to use us in that way. I know that Amy didn't share, get to share her testimony um, about getting to pray. I didn't know if I getting in trouble, so I, I didn't ask her to come on, um, on site here. But that she got to pray with her principal the day, first day of school. It's huge. And her principal son, because right now there's a lot of nuttiness going on. And so God will open doors because 
people will sense the light of God in you. They'll sense that presence of God within you. And, and we, as we walk around as that new species, you really, you and I really are new creations. We're not what we were before, praise God. Amen. I mean, and you see what we could be. I look at people, I don't like, how could they do that? I have to stop and say, you know what? And such were some of us, or that's where I could be if I hadn't met Jesus. If I hadn't given my heart over to Jesus, if I haven't decided, you know what, I'm going to be, you know, follow Jesus and I'm going to follow what that, that life and that life more abundantly, where would we be? Probably dead. I have to be honest, for most of us, we'd probably be dead or wish we were. And, and I'm telling you, these people that are, the confusion that they're walking in, they're not happy. That's why they're trying to make your life so miserable. All right, I'm trying to hear the Holy Spirit because there's something I was going to share, but I am. Um, so no murderer can enter the kingdom of God, but a murderer can get receive and become a new species. Amen? Amen. All right. I think I think that's it. One more. Oh, did we read first John three? Yeah, one more. yeah, we read three fifteen, right? No murderer. That was you? Yeah. Okay. So I'm gonna close. I could I mean this is just a touch the iceberg, but you know, for time's sake, I know we sing a long time. We have breakfast first, so I got what God, I felt like God wanted to share today. I think you can go back, share this, by the way. When we get it on the YouTube, subscribe, um, heart us, whatever you're watching. Go to transformationchurch.com. You can see the logo. Contact us if you need prayer. If you have questions, contact us, and we'll get back to you. And pray for me that I get it straightened out for some reason, because you guys are telling me I'm not getting my Pastor Becky emails, Tra Pastor Becky at Transformation Church. So I don't know what's going on. So um, I'm going to see if I can get somebody to help me with that today or tomorrow and set, maybe set up a whole new account. I don't know what's going on. So I say all that to say right now, <coughs> to, if it's today, yeah, just um, I don't even know if we're getting info. So go just do a Facebook Messenger me or um, do that. Do that. I'll, uh, I'll at least see it, okay? If you would like to become one of those new species, that new creation, yeah. uh, I believe that you do. Why wouldn't you want to be? And that God loves you and he has a great plan for your life and my life. And again, like I said, God's not trying to stop you when people are going, oh, you know, those Bible thumpers or whatever. They just don't want you to have any fun. You just don't know what fun is. <laughs> because I can tell you, we have dealt with from the cradle to the grave over the years. And, and it was the biggest eye-opener dealing with the young adults. And how they, if they could go back and turn back time, they would have avoided those pitfalls that they fell in because it wasn't fun. Fun is, a sin's only fun for a season, but boy, when this season's up, there's hell to pay. You know, all that, you know, start with pornography. Well, then before you know it, it, it actually, it gets its tentacles into you. And then these men and women, I guess, you know, there's both, but that, that cannot have a natural relationship with a person, flesh and blood person, because they've gotten so messed up. So God wants to set you free from all of that. Um, I wasn't going to go there, but for whatever reason, the Holy Spirit wanted me to. Um, I, maybe you're dealing with alcoholism. Maybe you're dealing, dealing with drug abuse. Maybe um, you had an abortion and you just need to be free from the grief of that. Maybe you're considering an abortion and God's speaking to you now because that will not bring you happiness. You'll be miserable. You'll always wonder. Um, and maybe, and there's nothing wrong with having that child and giving it up for adoption, by the way. And, um, and if you need help with that, I'm serious. Contact us. Um, you know, maybe you've been, maybe you're a pedophile and you need to get set free from that. Whatever it is, God has, he is the answer, and you need the Zoe, the God kind of life, to come into you. So if you're not 100% sure, if you were to die today, that you're going to heaven, I want you to repeat this prayer after me. Say, Heavenly Father, Heavenly Father, I believe in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I believe in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I believe Jesus died on the cross for me. I believe Jesus died on the cross for me. I believe Jesus was buried for three days. I believe Jesus was buried for three days. And then he rose from the grave. And then he rose from the grave. I admit I'm a sinner. I admit I'm a sinner. I ask you to forgive me. I ask you to forgive me. Take my life. Take my life. And do something wonderful with it. And do something wonderful with it. Fill me with your sweet Holy Spirit. Fill me with your sweet Holy Spirit. With the Bible evidence. The Bible evidence of speaking in tongues. Of speaking in tongues. I will never be the same again. I will never be the same again. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. You know what? It's that simple.
Some of you are saying, hey, the voice has just stopped. Hey, I feel this peace. Oh, I feel warmth coming over me. Some of you may feel nothing but like it can't be that easy. It is. When you die, you are absolutely going to heaven now. And Father, right now, I pray for the people that prayed that prayer with me. Father, and with us, Father, I pray right now that that Zoe, the, the, the life and life more abundantly that Jesus came to give to them, just infill and overflow them right now, abundant life, life and more and life more abundantly, that the very nature of God has been seeded into them, and they are now a new species, and old things are going to pass away. Behold, all things are going to become new. And Father, we thank you for our new brothers and sisters in the Lord. We thank you, Lord, that this is just the beginning of great days ahead. In Jesus' name, Jesus. amen. And Father, right now I pray for anyone struggling with addictions, with alcohol, with, um, with weed, with, with drugs, with um, sexual perversions, with any kind of, oh, Father, anything that they're dealing with, Father, for, for just depression, um, pain, Father, a heartache. Father, we just come against every attack of the enemy. And Father, we apply the blood of Jesus over them from the top of their head to the soles of their feet, tips of their toes, to their fingertips. And I say, peace be still to that storm in your life. Peace be still to that storm in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Peace be still. I see somebody in the spirit and you're opening up your refrigerator and it's empty. And the Lord said, put your trust in me. And he's going to send somebody that's going to bring groceries to your house in Jesus' name. I just see that. I see that right now. Some of you just feel like I don't even have the money to get um, milk or the proper stuff for my, my baby. Father, we just thank you in advance for, for not only the um, formula, and, and, but for pampers, diapers, whatever, Father, that, that will come to them. And Father, I pray that any of us watching, any of us here, if you want to use us to be a blessing to someone like that's in need, Lord, that you'd show us who needs groceries, who needs pampers, who needs whatever. Father, that not just the laying on of hands that, that we pray for them, yes, but Father, that, that meeting the actual physical needs of people, not just saying be warmed and be filled, because your nature is not to say that. Your nature is to give them food. Your nature is to give them diapers. Your nature is to meet the need. And Lord, we thank you that you're going to allow us to meet somebody's need today. In Jesus' name. All right. Thanks for tuning in. Hope we see you next week. Actually, I do a Facebook Live every Monday through Friday, approximately 7 o'clock p.m. Um, Eastern Time. A little bit earlier on some days because I have somewhere to be. All right. I love you, and everybody loves you here, and we're praying. And if you do have anything, again, Facebook Live, Messenger, um, Facebook Live. Messenger me and contact, and we will pray for you, and we're seeing the miraculous. And if you're interested in the embassies of heaven, Contact us. Also, if you'd like to give, transformationchurch.com, and it's got the giving tab. Um, and we pray a hundredfold blessing on those that give. In Jesus' name, and we love you all. Bye.